A schedule is just another type of view in Revit. Schedules show the properties of items in a tabular form rather than graphically. Since a schedule is just another way of displaying the building model, however, when you make changes to the model that affects items in the schedule, the schedule immediately updates and vice versa. On the View ribbon, in the Create panel, expand the Schedules button. You can create a number of different types of schedules, including schedules and quantities of model objects, which include spaces and rooms, material takeoffs within or across model categories, sheet lists, note blocks, which are lists of annotation symbols, and view lists. In the Project Browser, you can also right-click Schedules Quantities and see this same list. In the Project Browser, I'll expand the Schedules Quantities branch. As you can see, this project already contains a number of schedules. I'll double-click the Mechanical Equipment schedule to open that view. The schedule displays information about the mechanical equipment in this project. The column names represent parameters that have been included in the schedule. You can click and drag to adjust the width of columns. Be aware that if the schedule is placed on a sheet, the column widths will update on the sheet as well. I'll select the first row in the table, which is Water Source Heat Pump 2-1. When I do, some of the other tools become active in the contextual ribbon. When I click Delete in the Rows panel, Revit displays a warning to remind me that this will actually delete the instance in the model. Remember that schedules are just another way of looking at the building model. So if you make a change within a schedule, the model will also change. I'll click Cancel. With that row of the schedule still selected, in the Contextual ribbon, I'll click Highlight in Model. Revit displays a dialog telling me that there is currently no open view that shows this particular element and asks if I want it to find and open a view. I'll click OK. As soon as I do, Revit opens a view and zooms in on the heat pump I had selected. The element is now selected in that view. Revit also displays another dialog asking if I want it to open a different view. This can help you locate the element in other views and resolve any related issues. I'll click Close and then I'll close the floor plan view. Since I don't yet have a plumbing fixture schedule in this project, I'll create one now. On the View ribbon, in the Create panel, I'll expand the Schedules button and choose Schedule Quantities. Revit displays the new schedule dialog. In the category list on the left, some categories, such as floors, include subcategories, such as slab edges. You can also expand the filter list and select another discipline to show categories from that discipline as well. I'll scroll down in the category list and select plumbing fixtures. When I do, Revit automatically fills in the name of the schedule in the name field although you can enter a different name for the schedule if you wish. The options below this field let you create a schedule of building components or a key schedule. I'll leave this set to Schedule Building Components. Since schedules are views, they are assigned a phase, just like any other view, so you can create a schedule of existing plumbing fixtures or new plumbing fixtures. I'll leave this set to New Construction. I'll click OK to continue to create the schedule. Revit displays the Schedule Properties dialog. The dialog has five tabs, Fields, Filter, Sorting Grouping, Formatting, and Appearance. You will usually start with the Fields tab. Here, you select the parameters you want to include in the schedule. The list on the left shows all of the parameters that apply to plumbing fixtures. 
Plumbing fixtures can also include parameters from the rooms or spaces with which they're associated. You can also schedule elements in linked files. To define the columns in the new schedule, I'll select the fields I want to include and then click Add to place them into the Scheduled Fields column. I'll choose Type Mark and then click Add. Then I'll select Type and click Add. Note that you can also simply double-click a field to add it to the Scheduled Fields list. For example, I'll double-click Description. You can also select multiple fields. I'll press Control, select CWFU, HWFU, Manufacturer, Model, and WFU, and then click Add. Once fields have been placed into the list of scheduled fields, the order they appear in the list determines their column order in the resulting schedule. You can select a field and then use Move Up and Move Down. I'll move the model field to the bottom of the list and then move Manufacture so that it comes right before the model. Note that you can come back to this dialog and adjust the order at any time. Once I'm satisfied, I'll click OK. Revit immediately creates the new schedule and opens that view. When you look in the project browser, you can see that the plumbing fixture schedule has been added to the list of schedule and quantity views. You can use tools on the other tabs of the Schedule Properties dialog to adjust the sorting, formatting, and appearance of the table. There are also several tools in the contextual ribbon to modify the schedule. To return to the Schedule Properties dialog, when a schedule view is the current view, you can click any of the Edit buttons in the Properties palette. You can also add another field to the schedule by clicking Insert in the Columns panel of the contextual ribbon. Be aware that you must select a cell or column in the Data section before you click Insert. If you click in one of the title cells and then select Insert, a new column will be added to the title section of the schedule. Once you click Insert, Revit displays the Select Fields dialog. This is the same as the Fields tab of the Schedule Properties dialog. I'll click Cancel to close the dialog. You can also right-click the Data section and click Insert Column to access the same dialog.